Good morning. It's the 1st of March. It's uh, autumn or fall again, Stuart. Time flies when you're having fun. Right. It's, um, yeah, so it's uh, time for our weekly webinar. Last week, uh, I wasn't around, so we skipped that one. And next week, Stuart will be away, so uh, we'll skip that one. Uh, but this week, we've got a lot of news for you, including uh, stocks to watch. So Stuart will talk about some of the stocks that we are keeping a close eye on. We'll do an update on Webit Nano, one of uh, the stocks that we love so much, as uh, most of our regular viewers will know. And uh, before we jump into all of that, I just wanted to give everyone a bit of an update on how our uh, Conshare stocks are performing. Uh, so we'll do just do a quick performance update. So for people that don't know, Conshare is our stock picking service. We'll give you buy and sell alerts through SMS and uh, an email. Uh, we'll tell you when to buy, up to what level, what our target price is, and also we put in a stop loss. And I'm happy to say that the performance has been really good. So if you look at the performance of the, the current trades, the trades that we have open at the moment, they've done 78% in the last uh, since inception. So we put these stocks on at different times, obviously, but we started out in May. Um, so that's 78% that we're really happy with, because remember, this is still a bear market technically. Um, and then the performance of the stocks, um, uh, including the ones that we closed, and some of these hit their stop losses, right? Uh, but And some we closed when we hit our performance target. So the average for those is 37.5%. Uh, and the key thing to keep in mind here is that the, the ASX 200 has only done about 2% in the same time frame. So it's a massive outperformance. Even if you include the, the stocks, you can see them on the left there, the left chart, the, the ones in red um, that we closed out on because our stop loss got hit but all the others are doing really well. And then on the right, and I broke up the performance of uh, into two charts because on the right, you'll see one stock that isn't included on the left, which is uh, the one that's been delivering a massive performance for us. It would put the uh, the ratios or the, uh, the the scale out of whack a little bit. So I put it in two charge, but, charts, but on the right, you can see that one um, is done really well for us, uh, more than 230%. So really pleased with that. But in general, we think we're, uh, we're doing really well with uh, the stocks that we've um, uh, invested in the ones that we uh, took our, our profits on uh, and again even including the ones that we had a slight loss in we're still doing really well with 37.5 percent so in a nutshell we're very pleased with uh with con shares um if you want to sign up for a free trial uh, you can do that for three months you sort of test us out what we do because our philosophy is we're really transparent unlike some 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 peers in this industry you're really transparent in what we do what you get um it's a, a subscription service you can sign up for a year or you can uh, you can pay in one go or in in pay in bi-monthly installments or whatever you want whatever you prefer but you can try us out for three months for three for free and uh, again the transparency is i think really uh, what, what most of our subscribers uh, value the most so go to stocksonunder.com click the yellow button and just sign up that's what i wanted to uh, to start off with steward um so basically, uh, Mark, the, the, the way we've developed our services, uh, I think we're, we, we can show that we can we can make investors some serious money. Generally, over a six to 12 month time horizon, uh, I like to say we, we, we know what stocks are valuable six months ahead. Uh, so it's a matter for the market to then come around to our point of view, which it will do uh, over that roughly six month time period. Yeah, I think that's a good good way to to, to word it. And, and again, we are not big risk takers, right? So a lot of these stocks you'll find are uh, solid companies, uh, most of them. Uh, some are were early stage, a lot less early stage right now, but they've sort of grown into uh, into our thesis. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we st try to stay away from, from risky stocks. Uh, target performance is 20 to 40%, and I, I think we're smack in the middle with 37.5, right in the middle of that uh, target range, too, actually at the top end of that range. Um, Stuart, you prepared a uh, presentation on stocks to watch, stocks that we like at the moment, but we're not yet ready to buy is, I guess, a good summary of that. Right. So here are four stocks that you should take a close look at now. Don't buy the stock right now. Just let me repeat that. Do not buy these stocks right now, beginning with the one I'm about to, about to talk about. These are ones we're doing our homework on that are starting to look very, very interesting. I'll start with Freelancer, the first of those, ASX FLN. Uh, what is Freelancer? Uh, it runs the world's number one online services marketplace. So if you're a freelancer in uh, in, in uh, Jakarta, for example, and you want to reach out to a global audience for your product, Freelancer is the is the way to do it. Mark, we've used Freelancer in the, in the past to source talent for our firm. Yeah, correct. Next right. to Upwork. Upwork is more global, I'd say. Freelancer is is, is good for certain, for certain other uh, more local, I guess. Right. Market cap of roughly around $100 million. Uh, and the company's grown to the point where it's doing between 50 and 60 million in revenue a year. But the period after COVID has not been kind to this company. 
basically COVID uh, prompted a lot of people to start working from home and freelancing. Uh, as those people have gone back to regular jobs, um, uh, freelancers' revenue hasn't suffered too badly, but uh, it did have a down year in 2022, and it's loss making. Now, that doesn't bother me because there's uh, there's there's 23 million in cash uh, as at December 2022. So this company's got a pretty robust uh, balance sheet that can cope with uh, with any amount of restructuring. But they implemented some pretty serious cost reductions in the second half of of uh, of the of the year just just ended, and uh, that should put them back into profitability. I've noticed Matt Barry, who's the uh, CEO of this company, buying stock whenever he can, uh, as most recently as uh, another block of trade that showed up on my screens this morning. Uh, that's telling me that the guy who knows the company best of all uh, is pretty optimistic about, about uh, his future. So put freelancer on your, on your radar screen. Uh, there's a pretty elaborate description of the company in the, um, uh, in the uh, result that uh, just came out. Uh, it, it, uh, it's time could be coming around as 2023 progresses. And let's talk about Coda Minerals. Uh, I sat down last week with Chris Stevens, who's the CEO of this company, to talk about its prospects. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, copper cobalt deposit in South Australia called Elizabeth Creek. Um, uh, they started with about 250,000 tonnes of contained copper when, when uh, Coda Minerals was spun out of an old iron ore play called Jindalby. Uh, they've since quadrupled the size of that resource, and, and there's more where that came from. Uh, company faced some challenges in terms of figuring out how to, how to mine and then process the ore body that they had. They think they've cracked those puzzles now, and we'll know a, a whole lot more about what that what that is worth when the scoping study comes out next month. Now, I'm pretty excited about the scoping study, and if it doesn't show uh, that, that Elizabeth Creek is worth orders of magnitude more than 31 million, I will be very surprised. So, for full details, there go to stocksdownunder.com, and uh, and tune into the interview that I did with uh, with Chris Stevens. Um, now, this I, I better make full disclosure here, uh, Mark. One of the reasons I like uh, Chris Stevens is like me, he loves jazz music, and he, he can actually play. He's a, a bassist in a band that's popular on the Perth jazz scene. So um, right. so if if, uh, if he can get his rhythm right uh, on uh, Coda Minerals, as he uh, does with uh, with his regular uh, uh, musical gigs, uh, the shareholders will be in very good shape. All right. Well, if he, uh, whenever he's in Sydney, we should get together because, as you know, I'm a drummer, so we could jam a little bit. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Beach Energy, uh, that's a company that we've previously uh, uh, talked about. Uh, the stock has not been kind to this one since the, the, the middle of last year. It the, the peaked out at about a buck eighty. It's now about 40 cents below that at a dollar forty. I'm saying investors should look, look carefully at this one because its time could come around again. Let me explain my thesis. Basically, it took me by surprise, and I suspect uh, I wasn't the only one, at how uh, oil and gas uh, markets responded to the, uh, the shock of the war in Europe study. Um, suddenly it appeared there would be major shortages of energy everywhere. Well, the, the industry stepped up to the plate and the, the price of, of most um, commodities in the hydrocarbon space has not been trending back since May of last year. doesn't mean natural gas isn't important and particularly li liquefied natural gas to help uh, countries achieve uh, energy independence from, from the usual uh, uh, pipeline infrastructure. And Beach is part of that thing. Um, the stock had originally been depressed by some issues on the western flank of the Cooper Basin. They had misread the reserves there. Uh, that, that dropped the stock down to about a buck a share. Um, they then went and fixed those assets. Now, what I like at the moment is you've got a growth profile on, on production. Uh, thylacine in the Otway Basin in South Australia produces its first gas in the next few months. The big uh, Waitsea gas field in the Perth Basin of Western Australia, that starts shipping uh, gas north to the LNG terminals uh, by the end of this year. And then uh, by about the middle of 2024, you get uh, another field in the Otway called Enterprise. So three big fields about to start delivering. And uh, like any good uh, uh, oil and gas company, they're doing some more exploration work in, the, in, in this case in the Perth Basin, which has yielded um, uh, weights here in West Aragala as, as the latest couple of monsters, as well as some, some smaller companies. So there's a lot of reasons to like this company. The trend is not your friend, but watch when it gets back towards a dollar. That's when the insiders were buying post the Western flank issues before. And that, that price uh, seriously undervalues the, the, um, the assets that are in hand. Uh, the man you can see on the left of the screen there is Morty Engelbrecht. He's the new CEO that stepped up in the wake of the uh, of the of the Western flank issues. Uh, a, a steady pair of hands to make sure that uh, that, that uh, uh, the uh, shareholders can be rewarded for the investments they've made in some um, some pretty serious new discoveries. Finally, uh, Imuron, another interview uh, that we've got on stocksdownunder.com. Uh, this is with Steve Littimore, who's the uh, the new CEO of that company. Um, it's one of the best companies I've seen in a long while in terms of, of value in the life science sector. 2022 wasn't very friendly to be in life science stocks. 
And uh, this one were worse than most. In fact, you can virtually buy the company for free. Market cap is $17 million, and there's more than $17 million cash on the balance sheet at the moment. So this, this stock almost pays for itself at the current uh, at the current share price. What are they famous for? Travel Land. Um, it's, a, it's a product for the treatment of uh, traveler's diarrhea. You're flying to Bali. You want to make sure you don't spoil your holiday through traveler's diarrhea. Travel Land can do it. It's a mixture of... Uh, uh, of, uh, of 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 uh, antibodies to to various bad stuff sourced from uh, bovine colostrum. It's a platform that they've had many years to uh, to develop. Uh, under Steve's leadership, they're now doing some serious clinical work to take this up the um, the the uh, the value curve into a into a more serious prescription product. And what interests me is the U.S. military are interested. They they want to keep their uh, their their fighting men um, uh, uh, free of, of problems like travelers' diarrhea when they go into um, uh, uh, combat zones that are that are uh, uh, that are in, endemic for that sort of thing. So they're actually funding a lot of the uh, the clinical work that, um, that that Imiron is doing. So a lot of reasons to like this company. Uh, we, we've got a, a real business with a small amount of revenue and uh, and 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 some uh, some growth prospects from some, some of this new clinical work. So check out the full story with the interview that I did with uh, Steve Littimore. Again, at stocksdownunder.com. All right. There's four a, interesting stories that we're looking at. Yeah, you've been a busy bee, uh, Sue, when it comes to interviews in the last uh, two weeks or so. So, yeah, check out Stocks Down Under uh, under videos. You'll find a whole bunch of interviews. Including and I promise companies. the viewers, you will not be bored. Yeah, there's something for everyone. There's miners, there's uh, life sciences, there's technology. Uh, one interview we actually did yesterday, we hope to publish that today or tomorrow, was with uh, Webit Nano, with uh, Kobe Hanok, the CEO. And uh, we thought we'd give our viewers an update on um, uh, on what's happening at that company, because uh, as uh, shareholders will know, uh, share, share has performed uh, tremendously for us in, in recent months. So, uh, yeah, we'll just give you a bit of an update. So last week, the latest news in the company's um, uh, half yearly results was, uh, and this was sort of tucked away so somewhere half, halfway in, into, the, into the report, but um, basically the company confirmed that it's working with uh, global foundries on a 22 nanometer uh, fully depleted silicon and insulator. And, and this is a big deal, right? Global foundries is one of the top 10, top five foundries in the world. Webit is working with them, and uh, in that interview that I did with Kobe, we'll talk a little. We talked a little bit about this as well. So um, make sure you stay tuned uh, to the Stocks on Under website, where we'll publish that interview as soon as we can. Um, so that was big news. Uh, it, the other thing is, say that global foundries. This is the equivalent of going to the party uh, and going home with Sophia Loren, right? We're, we're talking with, with not just any partner, but a, a seriously valuable partner. Yeah, but for some people that will be Sophia Loren, for others it would be um, uh, <laughs> Britney Spears, you know, if you're slumming it. Or uh, <laughs> take your pick, an attractive, attractive actress who's actually pleasant to pleasant to be with, but um, or but actor, she... yeah, oh. depending on your preference. <laughs> uh, the Brad Pitt, I don't know, whatever it is, it's a it's a big it's a big prize. Uh, but there's a few more like that, uh, even bigger than Global Foundries, uh, and and basically we be just talking to all of them. If you will look at the top ten, and we did this in one of our previous webinars, if you look at the top ten foundries globally. Take out the Chinese ones. Basically, I think they're, they're talking to any everyone in there. So that's that's really big. Um, what was really interesting, and I have a, in a, on the next slide, we'll look at that as well. But uh, Webit was included in the MSCI Australia Index per basically yesterday, end of February, uh, and the uh, and, and I think the implications of that are are really big because uh, if you look what happened, uh, and and just for people that don't know, MSCI is 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 the uh, basically the benchmark for a lot of investors, right? You've got MSCI uh, Global or World, you've got North America, you've got Europe, you've got Australia. So if you're a big fund and you want to follow that benchmark, basically what you do is you buy all the stocks in that particular index. So in this case, MSCI Australia now includes Webit Nano. And that means as, a, as an offshore fund, if you want to buy MSCI Australia, you have to buy Webit Nano as well. So it's really good for the share price as we've seen. Now, what happened yesterday, and I thought this, I, I, normally don't do this, but I sort of dove into what the trading was like at the end of the day. Um, on that, in that chart there, you can see in the picture there, you can see at 359, which is the latest regular uh, trade of the day, uh, the shares were traded at $7.28. And then in the auction, so that the close, the match, uh, if you will, uh, at uh, 10 past four, uh, the last trade was at $7.64. Now, uh, I don't think I've ever come across uh, a difference of 5% uh, before, so this is very uncommon, and I and, think and it shows. And we can assure viewers that trade was not put on by Mark Kennis at uh, three fifty nine p.m. 
No, it's uh, and the, 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 the difference is really big, right? And if you look at the number of shares traded, 8 million yesterday, that's a big number as well. Um, and so basically what, what it says is uh, most likely this is installs having to get in on this stock if they're following MSCI Australia. Um, uh, so and, and hopefully maybe we'll see some more insights come in in the next little while. Um, so yeah, on, in that chart, you can see uh, the big volume spike yesterday. Uh, but before that even, you know, from, from say, October, when we we're still trading at two dollars, we've gone up to seven dollars and uh, sixty-four cents. So it's a massive move. And uh, of course, uh, full disclosure: we own both Stuart and I own shares in Webit Nano. We, we can be happier with this result, obviously, and right. we're in it for the for the long haul. So um, I, I spoke to Kobe yesterday. We did that interview. Uh, he's in the United States now, talking to um, foundries, IDMs, potential customers, prospects, whatever you want to call it. On Thursday, he's doing an investor roadshow uh, in the U.S. So um, in the U.S., there are certain areas like San Francisco, Los Angeles, Boston, New York, where they're very specialized semiconductor investors. So Kobe will have a very, uh, very good audience for the story that he's got to tell. In terms of milestones um, in their uh, presentation on Monday, the roadshow presentation, you can see the updated milestones. But for us, the big one would be another contract signing by the middle of this year. Um, so we'll see if that happens. But so far, we with Nana has really lived up to all those uh, milestones. Um, and if you want to learn more about uh, Webit Nano from a research perspective, we've followed this company since 2017. Go to our parents' company's website, pitstreetresearch.com. Go to Webit Nano, and you'll find all of our research and interviews there. Um, and stay tuned to the uh, the Stocks and Under website because today or tomorrow we'll publish that interview with uh, we did with Kobe yesterday. Right. Well, well done, Mark, on uh, on 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 continuing to uh, make the investors aware of this uh, this magnificent opportunity. All right, good stuff. Um, so, like we said, we won't be here next week. Uh, I think we'll be here the week after, Stuart. You will be in New Zealand speaking at a biotech conference. Yes. So uh, 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 I'm going to uh, uh, Singapore to uh, potentially talk to uh, uh, listed companies up there. Spend a bit of family time in Jakarta, and then I'm going to Auckland in two weeks' time. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll figure out a way to to uh, to bring you um, uh, our stocks down under webinar from Jakarta while we're there, for example, as special guest star, as it were. <laughs> All right. And the BioShares conference is that BioShares by the way. And, and, uh, the, the, and uh, I'm the, one of the uh, speakers at the um, the New Zealand Bio uh, Tech Associations meeting in Wellington. Uh, in fact, I'm the MC of the uh, of the dinner on the uh, on 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 the, the middle of the night. We're going to have an awards ceremony for some of the legends of the uh, New Zealand biotech industry. It gives me a chance to meet some of the uh, emerging companies that are coming out of that country. All right, didn't know you were into hip hop, MC Stewart. That's a, that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you either next week or the week after. All right, stay safe.